thank you everybody for joining us. Um, this is going to be a wonderful conversation about uh, a, an extraordinary subject in, in, in many different dimensions. Um, and um, I would like to start out by saying that um, I at least am, and, and Alec as well, our producer, are coming to you from the ancestral lands of the Abnaki people. Um, and we want to uh, recognize and acknowledge that fact. So um, in December of 2020, um, I was contacted by our guest today, um, uh, who told me that she was uh, working on um, a MOOC uh, for a teaching, introducing the Dongba script, and wanted to talk about games because um, she had come across the endangered alphabets and some of our game activities. And this, um, that was two and a half years ago. And um, Heaven only knows how much time had already been spent in preparing and developing the, the extraordinary course and, and indeed the extraordinary collaboration um, that has been uh, uh, necessary to produce this MOOC. So Jade, um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before going into telling us about the, the course. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, team, uh, for inviting me to have this very interesting talk and to invite me to meet all of you and to share with my uh, with you my experience of doing this uh, MOOC, a massive open online course, um, the initiation uh, to the Donba script. Um, in fact, um, Tim said that we I I contacted him two and a half years ago because I. I happened to, to, to find the Endangered, Lang Endangered Alphabets project website, and I found it quite interesting. But in fact, I started working on this project four and a half years ago, in 2019, and uh, 2019. And at that time, in fact, um, my background, I, I came from China. I finished my uh, bachelor and master degree in China, in Chinese university. And, and I was a um, language teacher. And um, later on, I came to Switzerland, to Geneva, and to, to, to continue my, uh, my, my study because I was interested in 2000, I was quite interested in ICT, using ICT in language, and language learning and teaching. So I, I pursued my study in Geneva University, in the University of Geneva, sorry. And later on, I did my PhD, uh, collaboration, um, a P international collaboration PhD between University of Geneva and uh, INADCO in France. INADCO is the National Institute of Oriental Language and Civilizations in Paris. So I did it in French and did my PhD, uh, my, my master degree in English. And, uh, and then I, I, I taught, uh, I was, uh, I began to, to produce a MOOC in 2016, and um, I did the first um, Chinese introductory MOOC in collaboration with my uh, former uh, PhD supervisor, um, uh, Professor Joel Bilasen of Inadco. And uh, later on, we got this idea. In fact, uh, he initiated this idea because uh, with our experience in this um, Chinese introductory MOOC, uh, MOOC and um, it was quite interesting. It was uh, really an idea coming from uh, um, a second like that, because at that time he traveled a lot in, in, in China, especially before COVID. And, um, and once um, we, at that time in 2000, I still remember in 2019, beginning of 2019, and the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, and uh, once he, he, he asked me, Jade, how do you think about using MOOC to preserve an endangered uh, writing system? Because at that time, uh, we had launched Chinese introductory MOOC for five, six times, and uh, we got a lot of experience about 
doing a massive open online course with more than, uh, I'd say, 9,000 uh, students online. Wow. And we created also a kind of learning community. And we formed, we trained two tutors to, to, to animate this learning, online learning community. So we, we discovered ourselves also the, 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 the power, kind of power of this uh, massive open online course. So at that time he traveled to, to Lijiang city and uh, especially the old town, he, find, he found this uh, Donbass script. And uh, both of us are fascinated by the, the, the writing system, Donbass manuscripts. And he asked me, why not do that? And uh, I said, yes, we can, let's have a try. And, uh, and then- I love that attitude. I love yeah. that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, 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 we got started like, uh, started like that. And a small step by step, where we we construct it, we, um, we 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 put this um, project in form, and uh, later on we found also uh, different uh, partners, except for Inatco, and we found the University of Geneva, and we found the Beijing Language and Culture University who were interested in doing this project together, and. Uh, step by step we form the project and uh this year early this year we got also support from unesco and that's it <laughs> and and the course we should say begins um on the 24th of april it's just about to start yeah exactly um so why don't you show us the uh, the teaser for the course which is beautifully made by the way Okay, I will show you now. <laughs> okay, just a moment. I will share my screen okay, with you. Can you see clearly my screen? Yep. Uh -huh. Just a moment. I think maybe something's wrong with the internet connection today with at home. It's yearly. Oh. Okay. I can try playing it. Yes, okay. yes. Alec, Alec, why don't you shoot it up? Can you? Of all the languages in the world, half are at threat of becoming extinct. On average, one language disappears every two weeks. One of the scripts currently endangered is strongly original. It is said to be the last pictographic script in the world. It is the Dongba script. Let's discover it together. The Dongba script is used among the Nashi people in southwest China by Dongba priests during their religious ceremonies. Dongba characters are sometimes fossilized figures of the natural and cultural environment of the Nashi. This look guides you on a journey with an introduction to the Dongba script and the culture of the Nashi people. It includes the learning of 300 basic characters through multiple activities, covering topics ranging from human beings to daily life, and religious ceremonies. This MOOC is the result of an international collaboration between INALCO in France, the University of Geneva in Switzerland, and the BLCU in China. By engaging in the learning program proposed, you will at the same time contribute to the preservation of a unique cultural heritage classified as Memory of the World by UNESCO in 2003. Excellent. Alec, thanks for, for setting that up. Um, so, um, uh, so Jade, um, when you were first um, deliberating how to, I mean, you, you had some extraordinary challenges here. Um, so you're introducing um, a culture that is new to most people. You're introducing a script that is new to most people. You're introducing a, an entire concept about what writing is 
that was new to most people. And you were trying then also to think about the pedagogy. How do we actually, how do I actually teach this? So can you talk us a little bit through the process of how you went from knowing about the Dongba script to deciding how to teach about it? Okay, um, to, to talk about this, uh, to answer your question, I need to share with you um, a, a presentation prepared. Sure, that'd be uh, great. Prepared by me and uh, by Joelle Bilasson and me together. And um, okay, just a moment, I will show you, uh, share with you this one, okay. So can you see that clearly? Yep. Okay. In fact, um, this is uh, Joel Wilson is the initiator of the project. He's a specialist in language and culture didactics and a former university professor of NATCO. So, so, uh, and uh, um, in the, in uh, at the presentation that I shared with you is a presentation that he did and we, do, we did together uh to from two 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 aspects of this MOOC and uh, he um uh, just gave an idea about what's uh, around uh, the, the all the aspects uh all the states of this MOOC and I think this presentation can help to answer all your questions and sure. uh, and later on I will show you another one that's my presentation and to get you inside the the, the Dumba MOOC. I use the, the word Dongba Mook so that it's convenient for us to, to understand. In fact, the name of the Mook is Initiation to Dongba Script. And um, in this, I'd like to show you some uh, citations that um, Joel Bilansen used in this presentation, and which I found quite interesting. You know, in the uh, Henry Nichol, in, in, it's a very famous poet, and white and French, not French, Belgian. And they said that after a millennia, the desire for the pictographic design has not disappeared. And um, since Joanna and me, both of you are quite fascinated with kind of a uh, pictographic or writing system, and uh, we began to, 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 to compare or to find some ideas or about the, the MOOC, a question about the MOOC, and the teaching and the learning of uh, language and a writing system. So uh, I'd like to share with you a, a, a citation that he found from the Mung, uh, the word in, in English. It's a very big journal in, uh, in France, uh, talking about the, 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 the impact of a MOOC, a massive open online course in the the 20, 2012, and that's the early stage when MOOC came to France, and people said that it is revolutionary because and the, the arrival of MOOC or the emergence of uh, immersion of MOOC help ask a question as uh, what will be the, 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 the current form of universities and what will be the rule of universities uh, faced with the impact of massive open online courses. And then the revolutionary dimension of a MOOC, what is that? And this made people to think that the MOOC Dongba and the question of the place and the modalities of knowledge transmission, if we have to change our way or a kind of traditional way of transmit language, transmit knowledges, whatever kind of knowledges. So and that's why in the Dongba MOOC, we began thinking of the animation or creation of a, uh, a building of a learning community or online, to be precisely, online learning community. And we began to thinking about its multilingual dimension because the Chinese introductory MOOC is monolingual, it's only in French because it was designed for French speaking people. But why not for X language speaking people. And uh, the challenges that you have mentioned, you have asked just now. And the first one is the pedagogical challenge. Because a MOOC 
is a course. So what is the didactic of this course? What's our focus of this course? Is it necessary to teach both pronunciation, I mean, spoken language and writing? And the experience of disciplinary construction of Chinese in France and made us ask this question. Because in the teaching of language, of Chinese language, we can to some extent, not absolutely, to some extent, separate oral language and written language. So that's why we have to, we, we need to find a focus of this MOOC. And definition of objectives at the, the graphic level, that is, we know that the Donbass script, they have, there are about 1,400 uh, pictograms. And let's use the, the, the term pictogram now, because later on, maybe people will ask, or we can question this, this term. And uh, so we use the term threshold or threshold level. In fact, this is a term that we use to define language uh, competence levels. And, and then the question comes for a learning methodology. So what kind of methodology we're going to use to help people to learn? And since it's a kind of pictographic writing system, so the visual discrimination skill and the character memorization skills uh, will be our focus. So that's the first challenge, that's a pedagogical challenge. In fact, there are various aspects I will show you later on. But before I come to the next step, I'd like to, uh, to share with you kind of um, philosophical and linguistic challenges. But that's quite interesting, you know, because in the Bible, uh, in the Bible we read, in the beginning was the word. But it, so sure, it seems that it has different ideas. No, language and writing are two distinct systems of science. The only reason for the second is to represent the first. And it's also, there is also his confinement, like we will therefore confine ourselves resolutely to the spoken language. I am so, so glad you're introducing this quote here. This is going to be great for discussion quite, fodder. Yes. It's quite interesting to see this kind of opposite yeah. Uh, citations. And in the register of definite affirmation, I mean, the tradition of Broomfield, language essentially speech, and writing is of no theoretical interest. In fact, we can find these citations in French very easily. Yeah, we just uh, translate that in English. Maybe it's not that correct, but it's okay. It, the, the, the idea here is more interesting then the correctness of these terms. And Sino-Western asymmetry in the field of grammar and grammatology. And some scripts, we know that today, some scripts have a close link with language, but with graphic signs that analyze and encode meaning, they have fallen short of link to phonographic writings. So graphically, writing no longer maintains the link of phonetic transparency with the oral language. It gains autonomy and no longer has the status of simple supplement to speech that the Western pronouncentric tradition has attributed to it. So the question is here, or what we need to think here, when are we still at this stage of figurative mythographies or simple symbolic signs, and when are we already in the field of writing related to language? So these are some questions that we think and uh, during the, the, the primitive stage of the pedagogic design of this course. And just as so we have mentioned a uh, threshold level, and uh, I'd like to uh, expand that threshold level, economy principle and powerful culture and the three key points that guide us to design this online course. So the first one is the application to the graphical sphere of the concept of threshold level and that of the principle of economy, less is more. So that it will explain why 
we use the term threshold, we adapt the term threshold preliminarily, originally used for, used to define communicative competencies in language and to the writing system, to the teaching of writing system. And the principle of economy will explain why we choose only 300 signs or characters, Donpa characters, to produce this initiation of uh, Donpa script course. And the criteria for choosing the Donpa character, and because since we define, okay, we will set a threshold level. And this threshold level is kind of entrance for people to get into the initiation of a writing system. This writing system is a pictographic system, okay? And then the next question is, what is the, uh, what, what, how, how many characters and what are those characters that we are going to choose among 1,400 characters? And what kind of principles that we have used to choose this or to select these characters? And now you will find that some main principles. The first one is simple characters with strong graphic combinations, com combinatorics. For example, <clears throat> later on I will show you with the uh, with the, the, the MOOC interface. For example, man. The character man, and we add some slide, uh, some uh, strokes. We'll add something and we can change its meaning or we can form new characters like woman and father, mother, grandfather, grandfather, and so on, and to form a family. And second is characters whose shape is related to the meaning. That means some, uh, some characters and also we still, we still in the, with the simple characters, simple characters whose shape is related to, for example, up and down, and to give some directions, and high frequency characters, and graphic families. Uh, for example, when we use the, um, the mountain, okay, the symbol from mountain, character from mountain, and we can form a lot of characters related to mountain. It's the same logic to water and the culture load. For example, um, since the script is called Dongba, so Dongba, in fact, we know that Dongba is the name of the, the shaman, Dongba shaman, a Dongba priest. And so this, uh, this character should be taught in a course because there is a very strong culture uh, color with this uh, character. Okay, and uh, apart from uh, language part, uh, writing part, we have cultural dimension, you know, because some strongly, in fact, in this, uh, in Dumba script, the cultural dimension can be, uh, uh, can be explained or can be presented from our aspects, uh, from two sides. So first one, Dumba sign have a very strong cultural charge. It's kind of double bottom like pictograms have a strong figurative charge referring to primitive um, mythographies and so on. On the other hand, they are a form of manifestation of the beliefs of Nazi people because some Dongba characters, they have a very strong uh, culture and a religious uh, load. For example, the, the character Shu is the name of the uh, of the God of nature. So this is another part of the, uh, of the, 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 the cultural dimension. And uh, another dimension that is quite interesting and quite important in this Dongba Mok is that the language policy issues. And the third objective to ensure that the aim of MOOCs is fully realized. 
because this MOOC, the purpose of this MOOC is is uh, is not just to 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 help people to learn a language or to learn a writing system. It's not only that; it's beyond that, because we want to motivate learners, um, more and more people to to raise their awareness and their willingness to preserve this endangered writing system. And um, so some digital support, the last one is the set of precedent, is that digital support for the preservation of endangered language scripts and culture. And uh, in, in fact, this MOOC addresses emergency situation. Why? Because today, as, as far as we know, in the uh, Nazi uh, region, uh, there are less than five Donbas who can read and interpret the Donba manuscript. So uh, the situation is really urgent. Okay, I think I, I hope I have finished it. Uh, Answer your questions. <laughs> um, yes, uh, uh, but of course, you've raised another 365 other questions, uh, which yeah. I won't ask most of, but I do want to pick up on a couple of things because um, some of members of our audience are, are very well versed with these issues. Some may not be. So um, uh, can you stop screen sharing just for a couple of minutes? Great. Yeah. There. You can see it. Wonderful. Um, so one of the first things I wanted to just amplify, uh, um, something you said, in talking about um, pictographic scripts in general, um, you gave this wonderful quote where you said that um, it is said of them that they have fallen short of the leap to phonographic writing. So, uh, yes, there, uh, there has been a very long Western tradition of thinking of pictographic and ideographic um, scripts as being primitive, as being um, a sign that the culture was uh, not intellectually developed enough to have developed phonographic scripts. In other words, um, characters that represent sounds of speech. Um, and I'm uh, I'm sort of fascinated by this for many reasons, one of which is, is pedagogical, because sticking to the MOOC now. So did you feel that part of your task was to change people's minds about the meaning and the value of pictographic scripts in general? In other words, to overcome this, this prejudice. Wow, uh, team, it's really a very ambitious uh, objective. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, whether we will change that, the, what people thought about language and and the writing, because you know people are they have different language background, and I'm, I'm Chinese, and so I I know that the, I have this this kind of uh, uh, understanding of the importance of writing system or because Chinese is a kind of ideographic writing system. So I know that, um, but I'm not sure that people from other culture or other language background can understand. But uh, what we, we are trying to do in this, uh, in this MOOC is not to change people's idea. I think it's, it's, it's too ambitious to use the word change. I prefer using kind of let them to discover let them to explore themselves. Right. Uh, the, the, this is the, the other aspect of writing, apart from alphabetic writing. I mean, right. And in fact, um, just to sort of um, link up with something you just said, um, up until very recently, it was standard uh, practice for Western linguists to dismiss Chinese as being um, an undeveloped system because it wasn't phonetic. Um, and um, it is sort of highly ironic that, you know, you have uh, Confucius writing at a time when the British were still painting themselves blue with woad um, and uh, had no writing tradition whatsoever. But nevertheless, um, 
uh, were quite happy to dismiss Chinese for, for two reasons. One, because it, it's not alphabetic. And two, because it was seen as being clumsy. The fact that you have such a, a wide a, array of characters, it was seen as being a sign that it would be impossible to learn. Um, and, and yet you come from a background where none of that would ever have occurred to people as an obstacle. Um, I, I don't think I, I, I understand very well your question. Um, so what you, you want to, to ask is that, uh, whether people from, so maybe with kind of, uh, Chinese, uh, you know, graphic writing system background will uh, will feel easier to learn Donba script. So is that what you, was that um, what you know? I guess what I'm asking is that is to say that you would see less of a difference um, with a pictographic script such as Dongba because of your um, background um, growing up. Uh, learning, speaking, and writing Chinese. Ah, okay, thank you. Um, um, I'd say that it's not that I would see less difference. Um, I prefer using the, the uh, saying that I will focus on different differences. Okay. Than people from uh, alphabetic language uh, background. Because, you know, uh, when we designed Chinese introductory MOOC and the focus, since our target learners are French speaking people. So the focus is on how to construct or how to build a kind of triangle logic for them. How to create this, because in, for people uh, with French speaking background and uh, the meaning, sound, and the spelling, they are linear. Yes. Uh, they, are, they are at the same level. But for Chinese, if they, you want to let them, help them to learn Chinese, help them to, to understand the Chinese language and the Chinese writing, and you have to create or help them to build a kind of triangle logic that is sound, meaning, and forms. Form is writing. They are not the same level. They are triangle. Okay, so what we want them to do is through this MOOC, they can create, they can build this kind of a triangle logical. Mm -hmm. So it's the same for me, for, for example, if, if, if I were a French speaking person, I came to this Dumba, uh, Dumba script MOOC and, uh, and maybe I need to construct this kind of, with no Chinese learning experience, Maybe the first step is also to help me to construct this kind of, or build this kind of triangle uh, logic. Yeah. But for me, yes, I have some experience. I know they are not the same level. So maybe my focus will be different. So I see, okay, why? Uh, that's interesting to know that uh, in Dongba script, the, the, the word, the, the character summer is written in this way. Why in Chinese it is written in that way? Maybe if you, I know something about yoga grief in uh, Egyptian, uh, sorry, how to pronounce that? Hieroglyphics? Uh, hieroglyphics, yes, thank you. Uh, if I know something about that, and that is uh, the, 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 the case for some learners in, in France, because the French are quite interested in that. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, in, 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 in hieroglyphics, and the the the, the, word, the the character summer is written in that way, so uh, my focus will be different and my interest will be different. Although I see the same thing, although I same uh, follow the same content of the course. Um, okay, uh, I have a couple more questions, but I really want to um, invite you to go on to the next part of your presentation now, where you're talking. You're talking about uh, what it's like from the inside, and what okay. the, what the yeah. MOOC is like from the inside. So uh, let's hear some stuff about that. Okay, thank you. I saw some questions in the. In the uh, yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to those definitely. Okay, we'll do that later. Okay, no problem. Okay, 
Um, oh, sorry. Um, I think I need to come from the beginning. No problem. Okay, yeah. So let's see the Don Ba Mu from inside. Okay. And from inside, um, you know that this uh, uh, this MOOC, as I have mentioned just now, this MOOC is kind of an international collaboration project. So we have three partner uh, universities, universities in Atco and uh, BLCU, Beijing Language and Culture University, and University of Geneva. And the, the, the pro these three universities work together to produce this Dumba MOOC. And um, Joali Bilasen is the initiator of this project. And I am the coordinator or uh, executive coordination, coordinator of this project. And we have three other uh, members in the, um, in the, in the course team. And um, Professor Yang Yihua, uh, Professor Li Yuming, sorry, from BOCU and Professor Yang Yihua from the Southwestern University of China, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Zhou Ying from Chongqing Jiao Tong University. So we are a team of five authors. And this project has got the uh, collaboration of support from UNESCO. Uh -huh. And um, the MOOC, uh, is composed of three main blocks. I call them blocks because it's difficult for me to find other terms to, to, to describe that because production of teaching and learning resources that you can see on the left, and pedagogical conception and communication and promotion. And this is very important. I will show you later on. And important contributors, uh, apart from the three universities, we have pedagogical team, that's the author team, the five members that I mentioned just now. And teacher and the learning resource production team uh, is composed of five members from UNESCO, two from Beijing, and one from University of Geneva. And translation team, there are five people, five trans translators and uh, coordinators from University of Geneva. And uh, we have also expert team, and that help us to do some interviews and the consulting um, uh, advices about the content of the course. And we got 12 people. And there is a tutoring team because once the MOOC is launched uh, the 24th April, there will be five tutors online to help to answer questions to animate this learning community. And all of them are trilingual, and uh, one of them is can speak four languages with no problem. And two of them are doctors in the Nazi studies. And we have legal services, one person from each university to help us to solve the authorship or kind of uh, also white issues. And we have also a lot of volunteers and 26 Dongba Shaman uh, from the Nazi region. And they help us to, to give us a lot, a lot of consulting about the images that we, we use in this course and the, the, the resources that we, we use in this course. And 10 beta testers, including three from Nazi region and more than 15 Nazi volunteers. So you can see that a lot of people, especially local people, were involved in the project, although uh, it was really difficult to get access to, 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 to Lijiang or to Nashi region during the last three years because it was COVID, because of COVID, and we could not uh, go to Lijiang. So we did that uh, at distance. And as for the learning design, and then we use the, the tool learning designer uh, to, to do the pedagogical design of this course. And uh, the learning design is uh, the, 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 an online ap application uh, developed from, uh, by, the, by a team from UCL Knowledge Lab and derived from the leader, uh, Ms. Diana Loria's conversational uh, framework. And 
there are six types of teaching and learning activities that we have developed, we have designed uh, in this course. And some basic learning concepts and as how we uh, produce this TLA activities. The first, these activities are objective oriented that help the learners more toward their learning goals and specific teaching aims and outcomes. So uh, I won't repeat that because you can see that from the slide. And uh, the, the focus is um, on the student-centered learning process. So uh, it's kind of uh, circles of communication to take place to your, between teachers and learners. And in this course, since it's an online course, so it's more between tutors and the learners. And the workload of each activity uh, is uh, calculate, calculated and is estimated uh, in, the, in the design. And uh, here is the course plan of the Dongba MOOC. Um, now we have seven training modules and the course will last for nine weeks so that people can have enough time to finish the, 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 the seven modules. The first module is introduction. We'll come back later on because introduction is, uh, is more focused on uh, cultural component. And from uh, module two to module seven, and you will have uh, five lessons uh, for each module. And each lesson will be designed with a task-based learning sequence, as you will see on the horizontal uh, level, like each, for example, in module two, we have four lessons. The first three lessons will uh, focus on uh, character learning. So like family and personal pronouns and the body parts. And the lesson four will be a kind of summary exercise. And lesson five will be a culture, uh, a culture trait. And the last, when you finish that, and people will get to have a, a small test, a quiz to finish module two. And uh, for each uh, lesson, um, they will go through a sequence like uh, watch a video, watch and watch, read and listen, and comprehension exercises. So that's practice. And then exploration, inquiry, and next one is uh, writing. AKG means writing. So writing uh, by hand the, the characters they have learned in the previous three lessons. Uh, summary of the uh, of the uh, characters they have learned in the in the in the lesson. Okay, and uh, I will take this sequence as an example and i will show how it goes on with some small uh, demo videos okay and the first ce signe signifie femme ou fille it's french version Il figure sorry, une personne because i didn't have time to change the version féminine. Okay, and you will find uh, the four versions, uh, different ver language versions. You can find uh, English versions, and the learners can choose the versions they like. Okay, and um, later on, I will, I will show you how it presents online. Okay. And then when they finish that, and there will be an exercise. And uh, it's very, uh, you can choose these exercises, uh, or you can choose different languages to do this exercise. And it's very simple. It's just kind of memorize, uh, kind of the, um, the, the uh, visual discrimination of the of the what 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 they have learned uh, just now. Okay. And that's the first level. And when you finish that, you go to the next comprehension exercise, and uh, that will be a bit uh, more difficult than the previous one. And so this one is to match each character with its meaning. So the first one is direct. And, and the second one will go further. Like we don't use the, 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 the 3D uh, printed uh, wooden card. 
as presented in the video. We change that in a kind of a writing um, like this, uh, an image like this, and then ask students to match the meaning and the and the the, the, the character. And when you finish that, you can go to exploration. That's kind of inquiry and discovery. And we will show you will watch the video first and to see how these characters are composed by single characters that you have learned in the previous sequence. And then to choose or to to, to, to guess the correct meaning of the uh, composed uh, characters. And next one, we finish that, we invite uh, the learners to watch this video and to write together with the Dongba. In fact, this is a presentation demo of, um, by a, a great Dongba in Lijiang. He did more than about 300 videos for this. And at the last, at the end of this lesson, we will find the uh, synopsis. Means that you can find the, and the meaning or writing of each character that you have learned in the previous stage. So at last, um, we go to the the fourth sequence, and that is the kind of summary of what they have learned in the previous exercise, the uh, previous lessons. So that's lesson four. In this lesson, we will focus on the practice of what all the about the characters they have learned in the previous three lessons. Okay, so now we are here. We finish the summary. We finish learning of the characters in this lesson, and we go to the lesson four. Oh, lesson five, sorry, the culture component. For example, in module two, the culture focus is on Dongba. Okay. And this part will be composed of several um, resources. The first one you will see is the introduction of Dongba ritual specialist. And it's in, uh, in the form of a mediated text. It's like a, um, a PDF PowerPoint. And then we have created also kind of animated videos for this focus, for this uh, culture focus. The, the form will be different. And then we invite people when they get some general idea of what is the Dumba ritual specialist and legend of history of Dumba. And we invite them to meet with a great Dumba. And this is an interview of uh, Mr. He Li Ming. He's a very famous uh, great Dongba in, uh, in, in, in among Nazi people. And after that, we invite learners to participate in the discussion. For example, in the module two, we ask questions like, in this lesson, you have learned about Dongba, discovered legends and stories related to the Dongba and listened to an interview with the great Dongba Halini. We know that the Dongba are singular characters in that. On the one hand, they perpetuate the scriptures and rituals of the Dongba religion and at the stage of the at the stages of Nazi people. But on the other hand, they have no fixed place of worship. So in which other religions does this phenomenon exist? In your opinion, are Dongba comparable to shamans? In how do you define the nature of the hierarchy among the Dongba in relation to other religions? So these questions can, um, we just ask these questions that to, to, to open the door, to open kind of, uh, a kind of way to uh, for for critical thinking and for kind of uh, uh, sharing of different ideas, opinions, and to enlarge a kind of uh, discussion among students uh, and tutors. 
As for the cultural part, and I came back to the module one, and because just now I, I, I told you that I came back later for module one, because module one, in fact, this is uh, from pedagogical perspective, this is the most difficult part that in our, uh, in the production of the, of the Dumba MOOC, uh, because we have to, uh, to, to cover every aspect uh, uh, about the, the Dongba, Dongba script and Dongba culture. But on the other hand, we cannot go too much profound or too much scientific in this, uh, I mean, too much research in, the, in, in this part. So it's very difficult for us to, to, to decide to which level we can go. And in this um, in this module, we have uh, we have uh, selected or we have defined four themes: that the Nazi people and their culture, the national language and the script, and preservation. An overview of research in Nazi studies. And in each big theme, we have some subjects. For example. Here, yeah, the Nazi people and their culture, we have Nazi ethnicity, Dumba religion, ceremonies and festivals, Nazi women, interview with, uh, with uh, research, researchers in, the, in this field. And here, uh, Duncan Puba from the Chinese University of Hong Kong is a very, um, his research work is dedicated to the translation of Dumba manuscripts. And the Nazi people language, and script, we focus, uh, we wrote uh, notices for culture notices for Nazi language, Nazi writing, the Dumba manuscripts, and this will be focused on the collection, the worldwide collection of Dumba manuscripts, and the interview with uh, a researcher, Alice Michu from Lassitu. And Lassitu, I, I don't know whether you people here know that. Um, it's a language and the culture, uh, languages and the cultures of oral tradition uh, in France. And the preservation, and we have, uh, uh, we have um, defined uh, subjects like a language, a script, and the culture at risk. It's more general. And preservation of the Dongba script, preservation of the national language, and interviews with people who are working in this field. And also the Nazi writing, sorry, I missed the one, as for Nazi writing, that's Bomba manuscript, Bomba script. And uh, we are honored to, uh, we had a pleasure to, to have uh, Professor Yu Suishen, uh, one of the big specialists in this domain in China, and to present with us uh, his uh, answers to a lot of questions. Because as we, in fact, why we did that? Because we put us first at the, uh, as, a, as a learner, the learner position. And as a learner, if I, I come into this, this MOOC, what I want to know, what I want to, 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 to find uh, in, the, in the MOOC. And I think I will, uh, I will stop here because, um, Time is running up, and uh, maybe the best way is to, um, to 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 show you directly uh, in the interface. Or the best way is that you get registered in the in the in the Dumbas MOOC and to explore or to discover yourself. So some questions here. Uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, probably best for you to stop sharing your screen so people can see you and you can ask the questions. Um, so, yes, um, uh, let's see. Um, Olesh, you had a question. You, um, uh, you want to jump in? Just a moment. Uh, I'll close that. Okay, I'm maybe having a breaking off uh, connection here because I'm on the bus now. Ah. But actually, mine is not a question but a suggestion to ask him 
because what uh, Judy does in this class is very much what we want to achieve with some other writing systems as a complex understanding of it. And maybe if I, of course, I'll have problem with the term pictograph and so on, and we can pick bones here, but that's not important. The idea is great and we should cooperate closer and, and learn how to teach this way the endangered alphabet, because I think this kind of project is just brilliant. Um, yeah, and needless to say, as um, as Jade was talking about this, I was thinking about the fact that this morning I was uh, mentally writing up a proposal to collaborate with Middlebury College um, to do an endangered alphabets course. And so um, the detail and the amount of work and the amount of thought and organization that Jade and her collaborators have put into this is uh, is inspiring and is, as as Ole says, very much a model for the kind of thing that uh, we might consider doing. Yeah, um, I guess we cannot afford this kind of... Uh, not uh, just yet, no. Uh, uh, yeah, the making movies, because I really love the part when you've got real tomba writing, so you can yes. see it, and it is preserved for, posterior, you know, for, for, the, yep. for the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I share with your idea, your 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 your, your opinion, because in fact that that's the, the most fascinating. When I ask Dumba to write this uh, this manuscript, write these characters, uh, there's no other demanding. I, I just have one condition: just to write a way that you can attract people to 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 write immediately. So, um, of course. And, you, and my question is, I understand. You, you, you do not teach the language itself, so you're concentrating more, more on the ideographic part of the writing system rather than the phonetic part, right? Am I correct? Yes, yes, right. And there is a separation between uh, phonetics and the uh, writing system. So we focus on the writing system. And this is a choice, it's a pedagogical choice, and you yes. can do other choices, and uh, it's possible too. Um, so I, I, if you mix the two, and then that will um, put too much working load for learners. Right, especially for a relatively short course. Um, yeah. So I was really interested in um, something you said a little while ago when you used the word linear, um, because um, for those in a Western tradition, we're used to reading a piece of text in a very kind of sequential and linear fashion. Um, and likewise, when we translate, we also tend to translate in a fairly linear fashion, acknowledging that there is different syntax and word order from one language to another. So I'm curious to know how you teach the process of reading a pictographic system where you don't have the same kind of linear verbal relationship. In fact, this this is only an initiation course, initiated course. It's not a kind of how to say middle intermediate course. I think if you the first the focus of the of this course is help to people to get a kind of uh, um, enough input of Dumba characters so that they can go further. So that's why we use the term threshold. Because yes. threshold is kind of you put a letter, help them to get that level. And then once they are there and they can go further. Yes. And they can both go they can go go further with themselves. Yep. And why why not, why I use the word linear? In fact it's not uh, a coincidence because Linear, in some extent, to some extent, it kind is kind of um, a, a fashion, or, or how do you say? Um, it's kind of um, the organizational fashion of the Dongba text, the Dongba manuscript, because the Dongba manuscript is different. Uh, it, there is not yes, of course, you can write it linearly, right? But uh, when you read a um, Dumba manuscript, especially Dumba script that used for religious use, and sometimes they are not linear. For example, they put sky or stars or sun always at the top of the page. 
not at the bottom of the page. You know, so the position is 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 very very important for right. for them to read the manuscript. Right. So it's a different kind of dimensionality, really. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, another question here. Um, uh, someone says. Um, uh, may I ask whether the MOOC will be available to the Nashi community, which I assume it will because it's an open course, right? Um, but the, the, he goes on to raise an interesting um, question of purpose. I was thinking that we as non-Nashi people are less likely to actually use our knowledge about the script in everyday life, which seems to imply the question, um, is one of the uh, purposes of the course actually to help the um to support the use of the script among the nashi people in addition to introducing it to the broader public i think um different people have can have uh different uh um how do you say oh, i let me put it this way uh, i think people come to a mooc they have different purposes right and the MOOC, the, the, the objective of a good MOOC is to provide people with different purposes. Yep. Okay, to satisfy their, uh, their, their, their purposes. And for example, I'm, um, I'm, a, uh, I'm just someone who loves, uh, who lo love a writing system. I want to know something about this system. So I come into that. I learned 300 words, uh, characters I'm happy. And I'm Nashi people. I want to know something about my own culture and my own script, you know, the Dongba writing. Because I know that people are using that. I know in my village, the Dongba shaman is using that. But I don't have chance to learn. Because, right. because this script was, was considered to be um, Transformed, uh, transmitted from father to son, right? From master to deceit. Yeah. So I, I cannot learn. Uh, I want to know. I want to learn, but I, I, I don't have time to do that every day. Like right. the, his pupil, or like his, uh, uh, for example, his son. No, I cannot do that. So this might be a way for me to get to know something about that. Right. And I think the value of that was beautifully illustrated by an email I got about a week ago, two weeks ago, from a young, um, a young woman from uh, Java in Indonesia. Um, so she had learned just a little tiny bit of the traditional Javanese script, which is not taught in schools. Um, and but she had forgotten what she learned. And then she came across some letters from her grandfather, um, which were written in a traditional Javanese script. And they were uh, very, very important because he had actually been a soldier in the War of Independence. And so for her, learning to be able to read the tradition now felt much more committed to doing, had the value of connecting her back to her grandfather and his life and his time and the entire history of their people. Um, yeah. it, it's something that is, is far more than just, you know, learning to recognize signs, as of course, you know, perfectly well. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. This kind of uh, the way to find about his one's own origin one's own cultural background. That's quite interesting. In fact, uh, as I showed you just now, there are 10 beta testers. They have tested the course before right. we open the, the door to everybody. And uh, uh, three of them are Nashi. And uh, three of them told me that, and this was a really good, great MOOC because we have learned a lot of things yes. from this MOOC designed for the big public. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and some, uh, one of them even proposed that uh, if you want to add Nashi language, um, ah. Nashi language, we can do that. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you yeah. See that sometimes you do it, something, you provide um, uh, a material or a course for people and they learn it and that may trigger other kind of. Yes. 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 Other kind of ideas. 
Um, so we have um, another question in uh, the chat, uh, just up from the bottom, a question from Ben. Um, if you could have a look at that. Uh, would we consider that, that ideographic like Shang Xia Dong Dong? Okay, so uh, thank you, Ben, for this question. In fact, um, uh, we didn't cover the the inside of Donba script because Donba script is still questionable whether we can use the, the term pictographic writing to describe the whole writing. The, the, the Donba script is still questionable. In fact, um, if you can go to I, I suggest you <laughs> get registered because because uh, Professor Yu Suisen, he has uh, explained um, very clearly in this course uh, the, the, the the definition or the nature and the characteristic of Donba script, mm. and he preferred using a term uh, kind of hybrid writing instead of pictographic uh, pictogra uh, pictographic or ideographic or ideophonographic or kind of other terms because you know this writing system is evolving um i use developing okay it's under development and uh, people uh we can find that most of them about 60 80 percent are composed of uh pictograms but we can have other kind of um words and uh, and uh, and uh, a kind of um, characters uh, that we call them kind of um, uh, infographic infographic text, uh, all kind of um, borrowing phonetic from a, a, a graph a, a pictogram to represent another one, but keep the pronunciation of the original one. So in Chinese, we call that Tong Yi Huan Du. It's a term that used by Professor Yu Suisheng. So he invented this term. He even invented also a term like Yu Duan Wen Zi, info, uh, infographic uh, phrase, infographic uh, writing, sorry. And, uh, um, and there is another aspect I didn't mention, I didn't have time to develop in the, in the, in the talk, is that the translation work of all these terms. And uh, sometimes it was really difficult. And it might be another aspect of, of research area. <laughs> research topic, I mean. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have time, I think, for one more question. Um, anyone, um, I have another five I'd like to ask, but I, I really wanna make sure that I give everyone else the opportunity. Another, another question from anybody? So I have to ch change the, the room because I don't have the, oh, the Okay. In that case, we, you know what? We should let you go. Um, we've taken up enough of your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and um, and we, we're recording this. We'll pass the recording over to you um, so you can have a look at it. And if it all looks clean, then uh, we'll get it up on um on youtube and send people the links um good luck with the registration and with the course and again congratulations on uh, such a a huge and complex achievement thank you very much and uh, um all this uh, all the purpose of this project is to let people learn and uh, thank you team and thank you everyone for coming to meet me coming to share me with your ideas and uh, Please communicate with people who will be interested around you and let them know it's for free. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Thanks again. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much.